T minus 48 seconds. Solid rocket booster development flight instrumentation recorder has gone to the record mode and the main propulsion system liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen outboard fill valves have been closed. We're coming up on auto sequence start. T minus 31 seconds. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Smiley is about to lock away uh, Lefty's threat for now anyway. She's going to use her Enterprise to take his bicycle. And I think she actually has the crown advantage over everyone. He's just the only one that the, the Enterprise actually affects. Um, so, because he's the only one with a non-purple uh, card of the crown. So she now owns the bicycle, which puts her at a bit of a threat, um, actually. She's, she has three achievements, a fairly decent board now. I mean, not was nothing like what Lefty had, but you can see how that can change quickly. Um, so she's got to decide what she's going to do with her second action now that she kind of has the power. Smiley opted to use her encyclopedia to develop an atomic theory. Um, that's not going to... She, she had to exchange her, her crown advantage. She's definitely not as dominated as crown as she once was. Um, but that's going to give her some, some card play power. So once she dogmas atomic theory, she'll be able to not only split it right, but she'll be able to start drawing and melding a seven as one action. And that will make her pretty strong. And I think, let's see, if she can get uh, five top cards with value eight or higher, she'll get that, that last achievement she needs. And here we are back at Big Speedleman. Big Speedleman feels a little left out right now. He's actually the high scorer in the game. He has the highest score with 22 points. That's still eight shy from getting another achievement. He doesn't have a, a very, he has the weakest innovation board, um, which, you know, as we move into the future, that seems to be um, the way to go right now is through ideas. Um, he wants to be able to score quickly because he knows that other people can score quickly. And if he doesn't use his point advantage right now to get these achievements, he might find that the opportunity is lost to him. However, if Smiley doesn't take an achievement, right, these achievements could get split up pretty evenly between Lefty and Roadrunner. This is kind of a long shot scenario. Um, if that happens, the game could end up points, and if Fix is able to maintain his um, stable, stable lead, that might work for him. So I think is a choice now, whether just to, and it's a choice we've seen other people have in the past, um, kind of had a, before the idea arms race, I guess, um, he has a choice now between going with where he's strong, which is on the continent, or trying to make up for his deficit, which is on the innovation board. I'll have to, I'll have to think about that. And Fix chose to go with what he knows. He moved to the farmlands, which I think should assure him of moving up the person to advance first into the age of grain and jug. That is, we know we can look at this now, that is the age of trade. and yeah, roads and trade, that makes sense. Um, then Lefty the Blue Baby, he, he was, see, he actually, he saw his hopes dashed. He, he had the game in his grasp. And this is one of the things about innovation, is if you, if you telegraph, and about a lot of things, you know, people know what you're going to do you make it too obvious and he really had no choice other than to do so right? he had to show what he was doing in order to do it innovation works in these kind of one two punches right you, you want to meld the card and then use it and then get the effect and he did to some extent but he was hoping to be able to keep getting that effect i definitely changed the tenor of the game anyway i i'm on a digression um he saw that dash and so now he has to kind of pick up from where he is. He still has a lot of advantages. He's got a lot more icons showing than everyone in just the scant two colors that he has. Um, and he's ruling light bulbs, which is important, especially as you move forward in the ages. Um, you know, if Smiley makes use of her atomic theory, he's going to do it first. If, um, if Roadrunner uses mass media, he's going to do it first. That evolution was a, a big play, and he can also do some things with it. Uh, he already did one thing. He got an 8 in his score pile instead of a 6. He can use that 8 to start drawing 9s, and then he might, you know, 
make use of the advantage he had earlier in the game in terms of age. We'll see what happens. Let's move forward um, now. And I think we already established that Bix was going to be the one to go. A uh, quick check on everyone else. Bix has two. He doesn't have any cards. So we're going to have to have two grain cards and no one even has two cards. Um, so yeah, it's going to be Bix Beetleman who goes forward to the Age of Trade first. That's going to let him move two people on the, on the, board, on the continent, which is, I think, going to help him if he, if, he, if he wants to continue to focus on the continent over the innovation, which you know, he might be, this might be too long gone for him then that's going to give him a, a little bit better of a chance to do that. Being able to move two pieces instead of one is a significant advantage. Vix started off the age of trade, the post-lefty age, I think. Um, that was kind of the post-lefty arm race, I guess. The post-lefty idea race, I guess. Um, he started off with the move action. He used his, um, his era advantage by being the the tradesman that he is, um, and just spread out more on the board. That puts him at 25 points. If he gets five more, he can take another achievement. That's slow going in Tempest, however, um, especially since his pieces aren't, very, aren't stacked, really, and he only gets one action per turn. I wonder if maybe it wouldn't be good if, if all of these were doubled up. I don't know. Um, rather than just the innovation, so that if you did, you know, if you moved, you could move twice automatically. And then when you move further in age, this would be moved four times. That might be a way to do it if you if you want to try this at home. Um, then Lefty, he used his evolution again. And remember, he's the king of light bulbs, so no one was able to copy him, which he likes. He does not like to be copied. I think there is some advantage to being copied. Lefty is not one who likes to be copied. Um, in order to draw nine, which he then melded. So his composites. If he activates composites, he's going to be able to take cards from people, ex except for Roadrunner. She has more factories than him. Um, and also take cards from their score pile, so that could be a way for him to build back up and take those final two achievements he needs for victory. And Roadrunner is the one to be vaccinating now. Um, and surprisingly, it's not going to be affecting Lefty. Uh, Smiley has sort of become enemy number one for her. Uh, though I don't, I don't know if it's totally personal. I think it is in a way. I mean, it, there was a sense that everyone was kind of together against the Lefty menace, and then. Um, Smiley kind of turned around and did something for her own benefit that actually made everyone else vulnerable to Lefty's vaccinations. So now um, Roadrunner is the one doing the vaccinating. She's going to return the cards from uh, Smiley's score pile. I think I'll kind of move this stuff over so that I have some room. As the boards expand, remember I'm talking innovation boards, there's far less room. Um, and then she has to draw and mill the six. That, that helps her. Um, that's also going to, she's also taken a, a lot of cards from Bix Beetleman, which is kind of rough on him, I think. But then he gets to draw and melt a seven, which is nice. He has a railroad. Maybe he can start doing something with that. And then she gets to draw and melt a seven. That's partly why she was doing it. And that covers up vaccination, so she's gonna have to decide what she's gonna do with her second action. Smiley is gonna use her atomic theory, which um, both lefty and Roadrunner are going to copy. So Lefty's going to draw and melt a 7. That gives him a yellow card, which is nice for him. And Roadrunner's going to also draw and melt a 7. She has explosive now. I don't know what that does. And she, um, the reason why she did it though was that so that she could split her blue cards, right? And draw and melt a 7. That's covering up the bicycle. That takes away an option. But, she could draw a bunch of 8s. So she could, get, she could use this to draw a bunch of 8s. And then, um, and then meld them all. She might have the points she needs for that final, um, that final achievement. Um, so now she has to decide what she's going to do for her second innovation. She's going to do it again. So the effect's going to be everyone's just going to draw and meld an eight. Everyone except for Big Speedle. And again, he's kind of left out of the activities of the others. Um, that. Ooh, now there she just lost her crown advantage. With that, and that card there. Boards have changed a lot. That would be something to take in. Fix it. Fix has made a determination. He's going to use the railroad he just received for a couple of reasons. One, it slightly benefits himself. It's going to let him draw three innovation cards. Um, it's kind of a change in the way he's been moving, however. Um, another big reason is the other person who benefits from it is Roadrunner. 
and he's feeling pretty good about her right now. He feels like he's not liked Lefty in a long time, actually. They have a long history of um, disagreement. And Smiley, he's a little unsure about, too. But he feels like a roadrunner he could actually be friends with. Um, so he's going to return all his cards, or she's going to return all the cards in her hand, which is nothing, and then draw three sixes right here. And then he's able to return all the cards from his hand and draw three sixes. And I'm drawing nines, of course, because all the other ones are done. We're getting upwards in age with the game, and it can't last much longer. And once again, uh, Lefty the Blue Baby has lost his age advantage. So Fix is going to have to look at his cards, and he gets this card too, which is another reason to do it. Getting someone to, to copy you can help you in this. Uh, look at this kind of trade, trade, giving you some sort of advantage. Um, so he's going to have to look at his cards and decide what he's doing with second innovation action. And it took Fix no little effort to choose services of the three cards that he just drew um, as a result of Railroad. Uh, to meld. That's going to... Uh, it, it inhibits his clocks. Uh, Railroad wasn't going to be super useful for him anymore, however, because he would have to return cards in order to draw them. Um, and compared with what else he had in the hand, he felt like this would be the one he could use the most. Um, so then that falls to Lefty. Lefty is going to make a demand with composites. He has more composites, I believe, than everyone, though I have to look. Bix only has two. He has two hills here. Smiley has three. Oh no, Smiley has uh, more, so she's okay. But everyone else is affected. Um, she only has, uh, Roadrunner only has four or three. So he demands they transfer all but one card from their hand to his hand. So Roadrunner has to decide, and then they have to transfer the highest card from their score pile to his score pile. Uh, that's going to affect Bix right here. I'm going to have to shut off the camera so that um, Bix and Roadrunner can decide which cards to transfer. Roadrunner had a much harder choice in, in that decision than Bix. Bix only had two cards and one uh, what seemed fairly harmless, so he gave him that one. Roadrunner had two cards that would both be damaging. Um, actually, all three were pretty powerful. Um, one would have helped her and not really helped lefty so she gave him that one um, and then she also gave him corporations she the one she withheld she thought he would do a lot more damage with um, corporations uh, he melded promptly he can't use it however he's already done two actions uh, two innovation actions but it lets him transfer a bunch of factory cards from from other people's boards uh, to his score pile so that could score him quite a bit if we take a look right here he's the leader in factories not by a huge margin though people could catch up pretty easily he only has six which is three up on Roadrunner only uh, one up on uh, Smiley and four up on Vic, so it'd be, you know, they'd have to do a concerted effort in order to block that, and if you played another factor, it, it, it's, it could be damaging. So anyway, he could take this mobility, he would take this industrialization, that's 14 points, um, nothing from Vic. So that would get him 14 points, which is not quite enough to win, I don't think. No, that would put him at 28, 30 is the magic number for the next um, achievement, and I guess he wouldn't even win on that. But still, another threat from Lefty there. Despite her fairly impressive board, uh, Roadrunner is in a bit of a pickle, so Rocketry is is a viable option for her, but the only person it would affect is Lefty, and I don't know, she would get rid of his score, which I guess would be worthwhile, but her main concern right now is Smiley, and that does nothing for against Smiley, and it doesn't advance her own position at all. It's a purely offensive move against Lefty, which might be worth it considering the corporations. That's kind of, if she's going to go innovation route, that's kind of where she's leaning. Mass media, um, she could get rid of a score, one score from Lefty, but there's no reason to do that over Rocketry. Um, again, no one else has any score pile in their innovation. She has refrigeration, which would be great to use against Lefty again, um, and let her score a card from her hand, so that would help her in as well, but she can't even use it against Lefty. Uh, the only person it would actually affect is Smiley, who again has no hand, so it's irrelevant. Monotheism is useless. Mobility, she could score 10 points off of it, which would be nice. Um, the problem with it is that she'd be scoring the points off of Vic Spiegelman, and she just she doesn't feel good about that. So she's really deciding between using Rocketry, which is a pure offensive move against Lefty, um, or 
doing something completely not innovation related or just drawing a card. She could always do that. And Roadrunner opted for the Continent. She used a transport card in order to move two guys. Um, currently, right now, Bix is the only one who actually has that ability because he's in the Age of Trade. Transport letters simulate that. She used her covered wagon on the road there to move another guy to hills. So that did two things. One, that's going to bump her score up to of two points, which is not huge at this stage in the game, but it's still something and every little bit can help as we saw earlier when Bix was down one from the achievement he needed. Um, and it also, she placed them both on hills, so that's going to put her closer to the number of factories that Lefty has. She's still one short, however, so she, he'll be, um, she'll be affected by the corporations if he does determine to use them. Smiley's also using a covered wagon. She's going to move two from this one to this one right here. That's going to put her at, at more factories than Lefty. So Lefty's corporations, if he does choose to use them, I don't know why everyone's up in arms about corporations. What harm can they do, right? Uh, but Lefty, I think, I think here we're seeing a lot of um, partially I, the, the fear of Lefty. Okay, we're seeing a fear of Lefty, right? Partially it's because he's shown that he can pull out something and, you know, totally change the tenor of the game. No one's really done something like that yet. Plus, he's shown himself willing to do these incredibly aggressive actions. Now, Smiley also has shown herself willing to do that, and everyone really is, because they're all trying to win, but Lefty has this posture that um, maybe seems more aggressive and less friendly than the other two who have lots of white teeth. Beetleman also moved. He didn't have to use a transport card. Remember, he is in the Age of Trade, so he was able to move two. He also didn't move to hills, unlike the the other two who have moved this. Um, this yeah, well, I guess this is a new round or new new miniature round. I guess new turn. Maybe a round is um, an age. Or I guess yeah, I guess we could call this a round and this an age. I don't know. There's there's so much conflicting language. Uh, in this combination game, because we have these ages too, but maybe they're eras, I forget what's era and what's an age. Anyway, um, the last three turns people have moved, that's the point, he didn't have to use a transport card. He also didn't move to, to mountains. He's not worried about um, the corporation card. One, he doesn't think corporations have any real power unless people believe in them. And two, he thinks well, he knows that um, he doesn't have any cards with factories on his board, so the corporations aren't going to take anything from him. There's going to be no corporate takeover. So he moved to Leaves, and you can speculate as to why that might be. Lefty is enjoying setting the tone for the, what do we determine, the round, I guess? For the round. Um, but he's not going to use the corporations right now. The only person it would affect is um, Roadrunner. He'd score eight points off of it. Um, so instead, he melded Suburbia, which is the card he got from Dix Beetleman, for those of you who didn't know, and you probably didn't. Um, and he's going to go ahead and dogma it right now. So it says he may tuck any number of cards from his hand, draw and score one for each card he tucked. Um, so let's see if anyone can copy first. I think he might be the Leaf Master. We have seven and eight. He has eight. Dix Beetleman is at four. Seven. All right, so Bix can't copy, and no one else can copy. So he's going to tuck all his cards, and it just so happens that these are six, there are six cards here, and that's going to let him uh, extend his power for those colors that are splayed. And also, he's going to score eight points, which is how much he would have gotten from her anyway. It gives him a little bit more flexibility if someone say says he has to take two cards out of his score pile, he can take those lower one point cards, and he actually might be scoring more than that. Yeah, he's going to score uh, five off the ones, and then another six off that, so he's going to score 11 points off of it. And plus, 
and this is the most important thing, he is going to take the Monument Achievement because he has tucked six or scored six cards during a single turn. He's actually done both. He's tuck slash scored a, a total of 12. So now he's at three achievements tied with Smiley. They're both people to watch. He might even be more dangerous once more. Okay, keep Lefty down. It's so true. Lefty now has, I think, 26 points, so he's four points away from taking the final achievement. There's probably a way he could get that those points on his next turn. Um, however, Roadrunner is going to take it upon herself to be the lefty spoiler once again. She's using Rocketry, that's the one she passed up last turn, in order to return two cards from, from his score pile. And I guess she'll probably, she'll probably pick the two biggest. That's going to drop him down 14 points, which is pretty big there. Um, she could do it again, but that would just, she'd be just be returning twos and ones, and that's not going to do a lot. Um, now she could use this to return a whole bunch, right? Um, I have to think about what she's going to do now. And she did. She decided the, the card she had in her hand wasn't super useful to her unless she was able to score it. And yeah, it just didn't, it seemed more worthwhile to take the points off of Lefty. And so she did. She got rid of all his twos, and so that's going to drop him back down to five points. So, oh no, six points. Um, Alright, and then, then we move on to Smiley. Smiley's going to use her industrialization. She is the factory boss. She has more factories than anyone, so no one's going to copy this. She's going to draw and tuck a six for every two factories on her board. She currently has seven, so round it down, that would be, um, that'd be three. So, she's going to draw and tuck the six. Emancipation, and then these two eights. So she gets the quantum theory. That's going to give her some clocks, which is nice. And then also antibiotics. Um, so now she's got a choice on what to do next. She kind of wants to activate this empiricism. The only problem with it is Lefty could also do it. And this is a case where, you know, if she does it, um, yeah, it could, it could cause him to win. <laughs> she was going to use it to, to try and help herself win, but he's closer to getting the... the um, this, is, this is the relevant special achievement. Uh, each card eight or higher, he's, he's rather close to that. If he gets, I guess, no, it's two cards eight or higher, he's got it. Um, and it's getting close down to the wire, so she's going to have to decide what to do with for her next action. Forgive me, I neglected the second part of industrialization. She could uh, splay her purple cards right. That, that puts her up one on um, Lefty's light bulb. So she can do this without uh, affecting him. She has to choose two colors and just taking a quick glance at the board, what colors seem to be to have not as many out. I don't know the color breakdown of the game. It seems like there's not a ton of greens, really. I think she'll pick green as one. Um, yeah, she would like to display that up anyway. I think she'll... There's a lot of yellows on the board. Several reds, too. What are her favorite colors? I think mean, she might go with that, too. She goes... She likes yellow, I guess. I think she'll go with yellow. She's a big fan of yellow. Yellow would give her leaves, which would let her get cards. That's a big decision. Okay, she's going with yellow and green, so she's going to draw two, and if any of them are a nine, or if, any, sorry, two nines, if any of them are yellow or green, then she gets to meld them and splay that color up. So she already got a yellow, and that gives her more overlap onto the board here. Not this board. And then green, wow, she got them both. That's huge. So that does, um, that's going to put her very close. She did well, not super close, but closer. <laughs> if, she gets, if she gets two more, uh, she'll have enough for that achievement. Two more cards that are bigger than eight. Uh, sorry, I'm half listening to my son outside. He's crying, he's crying. But he's with someone, so he's not like he's alone. Um, let's see how she's doing for light bulbs. The one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So she had twice as many light bulbs she would win right now, but she doesn't. Big Spiegelman was starting to get a little bit desperate. He didn't figure he could do anything else in the 
continent. Um, I mean, he could, but it didn't seem like it was going to do anything to help him. His big card services, uh, its main function is to steal cards from people's score pile. Lefty no longer has anything really worth stealing. Um, I guess he could have stolen all these ones from Lefty, but he would have had to get another leap going first, uh, which would have meant drawing a card anyway. Um, so he drew and melded computers. He's hoping if he gets another turn uh, that that will help him. You know, the, he'll get to draw and meld a 10 and then execute all its non-dogma effects. Um, that could be a total shot in the dark. It could cause him to win. Maybe not. Interesting note while we're talking about uh, Beetleman. Currently he's the high scorer. So if the game does end on the 10 deck running out, he would win right now. But he's got to stay a high scorer. It's time for the corporate flare-up. Lefty's doing corporations. Two reasons. One, he's going to score uh, off of this. And two, he might have a chance to get that final um, that uh, universe special achievement uh, because he gets to draw and meld an eight off of it. So if, if, if he does this twice and he gets a purple and a blue, it looks like, then he has it. So let's see, he demands transfer top non-green card with the factory from their board to the score pile. That's going to affect her right there. And Vix Beetleman actually just um, left himself open for that with the computers. He kind of stops thinking about the corporations, I think. Uh, not, a, not a wise move. Um, and he gets to draw and meld a nine. Oh, and they get to draw and meld nines too. So that, that helps them. Draw and meld a nine. Genetics, draw and meld a 10, score all the cards beneath it. That could be huge. That could be, well, too bad she doesn't have more achievements. Um, draw and meld a 9. So that's for Bix. Bix gets fission out of it. Whew. And then he's going to draw and meld a 10, I guess. Uh, so the corporations are covered up. He can't do it again. Oh, and actually, she's going to draw and meld this 10 because she copies self service. And then he's going to draw and meld software. All right, so that's going to put him one away. If he, he has another action, if he can use that action to get a purple card, that is 10, I guess. Um, or if he steals one from someone else, I'll have to read what cards he has. Um, well, it looks like he can draw them all two 10s. So yeah, that might do it. Uh, I think he'll probably just do this now because that will give him points, which would give him a 17. Yeah, the points would work for next turn, and then he could draw and meld the card right now. So the game could be ending. Um, he's going to dogma this, draw and score a 10. Let's see, he has four clocks. Does anyone tie him? She did have four clocks, but she has three now. She does. Ooh, so if he did that, that could cause her to win. Um, I think he likes his chances. Does he, is he a gambling man? What do you think? I think he is. Win the easiest way you can. Yeah, there you go. That's gonna could cause her to win too. But all right, draw and melt two tens. She's gonna do it first. There's one that puts her up one. If this next one's a red, she's gonna win. It's smiley, and it's not. It's purple. When she's supposed to draw and score a ten. Technically, she's supposed to do that first. Um, but draw and score a ten. Draw and melt two tens. And this is smart, he's running that down and he now has the highest score. Uh, neither of them are going to help him though. He didn't get the purple card he needed. If he had missed the internet, that was what it was down to, the internet. Okay, I feel like everyone's kind of grasping at straws here, including um, Roadrunner. She's going to use genetics. She has the most light bulbs now, suddenly. So she's going to be the only one to do it. We're almost done. And if this card gets drawn, or if two cards gets drawn, uh, Lefty's going to win. Uh, but he's got a lot of ways to win now. Uh, kind of unexpected. Well, not totally. But she's going to draw and melt a 10, score all the cards beneath it. Um, so she's going to score all of these. That's going to give her, I'm assuming, uh, maybe not. I was assuming it would give her enough to make an achievement. Well, 18, 25, yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, she's at 30, so she could take the achievement or she could look at what robotics does and decide what to do with that. Remember, the clock is ticking. So score your top green card, draw and the 10, then execute. Do not share them. Hmm. So she's she's got an interesting decision right now. She could draw and meld this and hope that it does something to win the game for her. Or... She could take the achievement and hope things have 
Ah, uh, so, yeah. Hmm. The problem with doing this one is she's really setting up Lefty to win on someone else's turn, and she would prefer not to play with him. But she would also prefer not to play with Smiley. Um, she would like to play with Vic Speedleman. She doesn't think she's going to win herself. So I don't think taking the achievement makes a ton of sense. I think she's going to score her top green card. Oh, can anyone copy this? Oh, shoot. If they can, then that would... That, yeah, they can. So she would copy this. And she would, yeah, that would cause that would cause the game to win in Lefty's favor for sure. She did that. So really, her, what are her choices? What are her choices? And she's got to get the, the points out of his hand. If she can do that, then that might do something. It's going to set up Smiley to win. She's kind of in a kingmaker position right now. Okay, she thought a second, and I think this is what she's going to do. She's going to use genetics, and she's the only one who can do this, so this might make sense. She's going to draw and mill the last ten of the game. If anyone else has to draw a card, then um, the game is over and it's scored on points. She was hoping it would be a different color, because then she, would, she might have more points, like if it was yellow, for example. I don't think she's the high scorer right now. So she kind of gambled, and I think maybe it didn't pay off. 12, 18, 21, 25, 27, 30. And then on the board she has, or on the continent, sorry, on the continent she has 6. So 36, she might be the high scorer. Let's see what he has. 19, 27, 28, 30, 31, 32. She is the high scorer right now. So we'll see, I guess it's up to Smiley. We'll see what she does on her turn. Smiley is in a really difficult position right now. All of her cards would involve ending the game, and she's not going to be able to score enough to make that work out for her. So here she could transfer a card, and then the person with the most leaves would win. Um, here she could draw some pens, you know, again, so we might copy. But any drawing of pens is going gonna, gonna to hurt her. This one lets her execute any of the demands that are any of the things on another one of her cards. Um, if he didn't have this, this monument achievement, she could have won with this card. This one lets her return a card from her hand, but she doesn't have one in order to draw two cards. So I don't think an innovation action is what she's going to do. Um, it's tough, though, because she doesn't really have any way of doing much otherwise. She might just have to look at what her Tempest cards are. She has a lot of these. Um, I think she's going to... She's going to have to, I guess, use her sanitation. And bring this up one. Once again, Bix is the one to move forward. Um, there's actually some card play on that one. He and Smiley both played cards. He ended up still having more for us. She would have been tied with him if he hadn't played anything. But they had some education cards that allowed them to go forward. What's, it's going to be another action, though I don't think it's going to get that far. It's, it's not a huge deal, maybe. Um, things could have been very different if the round had continued how it was. It would have been Bix's turn. But since it's, he's not going to get a turn, I don't think. Uh, lefty's going to decide on what he does, and since he's in control and he's in a fairly strong position, I could see him winning the game. What would that? What would? What would? What would be required for that? He'd need to get a purple card here that's eight or higher. He would win the game if he um, was able to score some points and then do a draw action. He would win the game. Those are two big ways he could do it. Um, he also has some cards that could do something, so we'll have to see what he has. And I believe Lefty worked it out corporations. Um, he's going to demand you, which is anyone with fewer factories than him, that's going to consist of Roadrunner and also Big Spielman, but it's not going to affect Big Spielman. Transfers a card with a factory from their board to his score pile. That's going to put him at the high score. And then that person would draw and mail them eight. Um, yeah, so she can't. So that ends the game. It's going to be on score. Uh, he has... 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 22, 32, 41, 42 points to, um, uh, 43 points to Roadrunner, who's going to be the next highest. 5, 12, 18, 21, 25, 30. So, or no, 30, 36. So Lefty is in it, and it's going to be, we're going to have to do a, a third game, which is between these two right here. Uh, very, very close. I'll, I'll come back with my thoughts after I go on a, on a, a family outing. Well, that's going to do it. That's going to do it for our experiment, and that's going to do it for these two very worthy competitors. My um, my appreciation of both of them and their efforts in this in conquest of the planet Earth, the and Gohio's combination is one of the reasons why I wanted to continue the crossing link. Also, it was short. Also, there was this this game that I wanted to try uh, combining in. Yeah, so let's let's think about how that went as, as an experiment. I mean, what did we see overall? We saw at the end people were pretty much just playing innovation, right? Uh, innovation was some weird kind of extra thing. I don't know if that's necessarily a problem, and I also don't know what would have happened if someone had been tempesting it up right at the beginning of the game. No one did that, so it's it's hard to make the comparison. Also, um, believe it or not, my brain has a has a hand in this. My brain wasn't thinking a lot about Tempest. Um, and I, you know, there was a lot about the game that I kind of forgot. It's been months since I played it. So there was that as well. However, I think it's fair to say Innovation still had maybe a, a, was, it was a bit stronger. Um, I think you know, if anyone wanted to try this at home, it, or if I end up trying it with other people, I will probably try to do this. It might be interesting to see what happens if you double the amount of Tempest actions for activation. Um, I don't know if that would even things out or not, because we still have the drama, but I don't know. It, may, it, might, it might make the Tempest side stronger. The Tempest actually played more of a role than I thought it might, given the rule set. Um, a lot of interesting things, especially towards the end. The game just kind of exploded, and, and I think that that's sort of um, sort of a Tempest type thing. Tempest kind of starts off very slow, um, and suddenly we're all facing each other. This was kind of a weird Tempest in that everyone kind of placed their pieces near each other, which was unusual. Um, but they didn't decide to fight. I think maybe because the innovation, um, the the thing to do to people in the innovation felt more worthwhile. I wonder, um, there was one rule I was playing with, the Tempest rule, where you could attack someone if they were down to three spaces. I wonder if you just removed that rule, what would happen, because then people would have to, they would have to focus at least somewhat on the continent, if nothing else, but just to protect themselves. So like, uh, Lefty, for example, he could have been destroyed by, um, Fitz Beetleman if, uh, if that rule wasn't in place, but he just kept it to three hexes so you didn't have to worry about it. Um, and then the other three didn't fight. It, it, it didn't seem like, ever seem like it didn't get you very much to take someone else down in that way. I mean, you would get their hex, but that wasn't such a big way of scoring. Um, and also, we didn't have these these cards. These cards are something to consider too if you wanted to try this at home. Maybe having them come into play a little bit more might do something. Um, I don't know if I, I don't think I would want to tie it into the have ideas action, uh, really. Um, but then you could you could also have the innovation actions totally separate from the have ideas action, um, and just have the have ideas action double as well. I don't know what that would do. I, I feel like it might kind of water things down in a way. I I, I like how those cards were sort of more special because they were. Uh, but you could, if you've actually watched this far, you could probably draw your own conclusions, which are maybe more apt than mine. Um, interesting doing a game this way, because, you know, usually when I do these videos, my brain's already pulled by a number of different factors, right? There's keeping the rules in mind, there's shots, but obviously I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that. Uh, the camera work, or uh, what it's going to be like for you to 
viewer, but there's a little of that. You know, I try to try to be succinct when when I when when possible, believe it or not. Um, and then there's the different characters' personalities, so there's those things to juggle. And here, there's a there's an extra valuable sense since this is not a game that I had um, uh, as full of an understanding of as as other games I've done in the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. So there, my brain was pulled in another way, and I think what I talked about was pulled in another way because. I think partially you might be watching this particular video because you're interested in the way the games combine. Um, and so that maybe diluted some of the other con content, especially the interpersonal involvement. Um, though I think it existed in the end. Um, if, if not mainly in my head, I don't think I voiced a lot as much of what was going on between the players. But uh, towards the end there was definitely some interactions. I, I, I did. Let's talk a little bit about Bix, actually. Bix and Smiley, they're both leaving us. They both had some interesting moments in the game. Um, Smiley, where her very mercenary moment, where she just kind of decided, you know, screw the, the, the kind of informal, and it was informal, so I think that was kind of how she justified it. Uh, unification against Lefty, and just do what I, I can for myself. And that almost paid off for her. She was close to winning. She just found herself in, in a position where she, she wasn't strong anywhere. Um, kinda, but she, I think it's her winning. Um, but, you know, at what cost? What cost? I, I think if her and Roadrunner run, to, run into each other again, there's going to be um, less trust there. And, I think if, if she and Bix Beetleman run into each other again, there's going to be less trust there. Bix didn't have a super strong game. He did manage to get one achievement. He was a, he, he also was ruling the continent. I don't think he did that soon enough for that to, to matter. If he had um, taken control of the continent sooner, he might have found himself doing quite well. And there's one thing about that that I actually want to point out. Um, controlling the continent and having a lot of pieces on the, the continent that's really going to help you in innovation quite a bit because you're going to have that icon advantage. And if you have an icon advantage, people are going to be, feel very frustrated about, you know, about the relationship with you. So that might be a way to go, to just focus on that, not get distracted by the innovation stuff early on, which is almost kind of a flip for how you would normally play templates. Normally you do the have ideas first and then do the other stuff. Um, this would be kind of a reverse, and that could have worked. I don't know. Um, Personality-wise, I think he's maybe a, a probably a bit frustrated with how it ended up. I think he's he hopes that he found a friend in Roadrunner after all is said and done. Um, but I think he really didn't want Lefty to win, and he's really going to be pulling for Roadrunner uh, in the the final game of this Protestant leg, which will be one on one, Roadrunner versus Lefty to see who can be truly the Protestant player. And I have to apologize once again to Roadrunner if it's not her, because that that's partially on me. Um, but I think I, I did what was right for the tournament. I hope you forgive me. And now, uh, for those of you who have been waiting, Joe D'Agostino with The Last Day.
Oh, oh.